The year is 1997, and in this year something remarkable happens in the world of Magic the Gathering. The first ever video game gets released, simply called Magic the Gathering, but we know it better as Chandelar, and it's released by Microprose. Now in this game you walk on the plane of Chandelar and you're trying to defeat the five evil wizards, and the five evil wizards wants to collect mana to cast their evil spell of dominion and take control of the entire plane of Shamlar. But that's actually not what I want to talk about in today's Timmy Talks. In today's Timmy Talks, I want to talk about a unique set of digital cards that only lives in the realm of Shamlar. They're called the Astral Cards. And guess what? I've got them right here. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to talk about the first digital Magic the Gathering set ever. And that set is called Astral and it was uh, presented to us in the video game of Chandelar. And I've got the full guide right here. Chandelar was so much fun. Um, but before I dive into this, these were actually sent to me. I didn't make them myself. They were sent to me by patron Marco. And I want to share the uh, letter uh, with you. It's quite nice. Um, here it is. Ciao, Timmy. I hope these homemade prints will help you to better present the Astral set on your YouTube channel. I've also included a personalized Italian print of a particular Ice Age card. I'm really looking forward to the next Ice Age tournament. Greetings. Oh, there's the camera. Greetings from London, Marco. So am I, Marco. But today we are going to talk about the Astral set. And I'm really thankful and happy that you've sent these cards to me. I think it's just a great topic to discuss here on the channel. The cool thing is you have to imagine all of a sudden they could make digital magic cards. And that meant it kind of opened up a whole new realm of abilities. And I guess the main ability that they focused on was randomization. And uh, that's already shown in the first card because I'm going to show them in alphabetical order. Um, so we're just going to start with the eight or 12 cards in total. We're going to look at all of them. Um, this is the Ash 1 Jaguar, 2 green and 1 to cast for a 2-2. Two, two. Here you can see the Astral set logo, by the way. It's a Summon Jaguar, and it reads, When Ash 1 Jaguar comes into play, choose a random creature type um, from those uh, in target opponent's deck. 2 green and tap, bury target creature of the chosen type. So with other words, it needs to be quite easy to quickly see what creature types somebody has in their deck. So what you can basically do before you play with these astral cards, obviously you discuss it beforehand and then you make sure that you both have a list of the creature types in your deck. And then this can actually work. Um, it could be a really good card against, of course, tribal decks. And I like the fact, I like the flavor. I mean, it's a jaguar, so it, it, it chooses a prey and hunts that prey and it goes for that prey. So. Yeah, I get it. You know, Jaguar has a certain appetite and chases a certain type of creature. So yeah, it, it, it makes sense. I think this is definitely a playable card. And then we have the next one, Cole from the Grave with Beautiful Art by Quinton Hoover. And this card, I think, is really um, useful in like a multiplayer match. It's really cool. One block and two to cast for a sorcery. Put a random creature from a random graveyard into play under your control. Call from the grave deals to you damage equal to the creature's casting cost. And yeah, it's just really cool. This art reminds me of Word of Command. Not the ability, but the art. Um, you know, the eyes. And then I guess a more pimped up version of Word of Command. Um, the art by Quentin Hoover. Beautiful card and I, I think really playable. Then we've got a card that looks quite complicated to play, the Fairy Dragon, two green and two. Um, it's a one three flyer, and for one and two um, green, you don't have to tap it, you can play a random effect. Now I found a website where they actually put all the random effects uh, underneath each other. So I'm just gonna, gonna put it here so you can have a look at that. So if you kind of use that list, um, I guess it's, it's pretty playable. You can actually play the fairy dragon. So it's quite nice. So that's the fairy dragon. And then we've got, ah, Jambazar. Good old Jambazar. I remember Jambazar, like the, the, the sound that it made when it came um, into play. Really cool sound. Nice. And Jambazar reads, when Jambazar comes into play, choose a random color. And then tap, add to your mana pool, one mana of the color last chosen, then choose a random color. Right, so every time it chooses a random color, and that's 
actually quite easy to do because you only have five colors in magic, so five options. So if you just have a dice, um, a six-sided dice, you can already play with this card. So I think this card is one of the easiest cards to play and, and kind of fun, actually. And oh, talking about fun, the Goblin Polka Band. So two red for a 1-1, one, one, summon Goblin. Two and tap, pay one red for each target. Tap any number of random target creatures. Goblin tapped in this way, do not untap during their controller's next untap step. So goblins tapped in this way, do not untap during their controller's next untap uh, phases. Interesting. So in other words, I guess this is quite easy to use. You can, for each creature on the battlefield, you can, for example, flip a coin to see if it's going to be tapped or not. And yeah, that's basically it. And then all the goblins stay tapped, I guess. Very nice. Like the art again. Quentin Hoover, by the way. Very, very cool. Goblin Polka Band. Okay. And then we've got another one. Ooh, Necropolis of Azar. Two black and two. Wow, this is really nice art by Rob Alexander. Let's take a look at this. Sorry for the glare. Really nice. I like it, but look at the amount of text on this one. It's an enchantment. It reads, whenever a non-black creature is put into any graveyard from play, put a husk counter on Necropolis of Azar. Pay five, remove a husk counter from Necropolis of Azar. Put a spawn of Azar token into play. Treat this token as a black creature with a random power and toughness, each no less than one and no greater than three. That has Swamp Walk. Okay, that's, again, that's quite doable. I like these, I think these cards, and I'm sure people already did, right? This is Astral Set has been out forever. Uh, if you ever played with these Astral cards in an actual game of Magic, how did you do it? And, and was it a fun experience? Because these cards just seems like a ton of fun to actually play. But let's just quickly go to the next one. Oh, look at the art on this. Wow, by Melissa Benson. Orcish Catapult. An instant, that's actually instant direct damage is good. Let's see what it does. Randomly distribute X minus O minus one counters among a random number of random target creatures. Okay. So I found this other version online. The rules text is a little bit easier. So this one reads Orcish Catapult, right? Two red and X put uh, minus O minus one counter on target creature chosen at random. Repeat this process X times. So, yeah, I think this card's actually pretty good and pretty playable. Um, it just the risk, of course, is when you say you play for five, you could end up putting five counters on your own guys. But the nice thing is you can actually, let's say there's an alpha strike against you and you've got a chum block, so you declare blockers first. You already know that your creatures are going to die because you're forced to block. Then you can play the Orcish Catapult. And, um, you know, if you're lucky, kill some more creatures and survive, I guess. Anyway, I think it's a, it's a pretty cool card. I would, I would definitely, I think I can play this. And of course, in a creatureless deck or when you don't have any creatures on the board yet, could be useful. Pandora's Box, okay, five to cast, art by Amy Weber. Choose three and tap, choose a random summon card from all players' decks. For each player, flip a coin. If the flip ends up heads, put a token creature into play and treat it as though an exact copy of the chosen summon card were just played. Oh, choose a random summon card from all players' decks. And I guess then afterwards you've got to, uh, those summon cards go back in the library. Again, I found um, an updated Oracle text. So it reads here for each player, flip a coin. If you win the flip, create a token. That's a copy of a creature card chosen at random from that player's deck. Okay, that kind of makes, that, 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 that's, when I read it like that, it's kind of doable. It's still going to be a lot of work. Can you imagine playing multiplayer? Everybody has to take out their creatures, I guess. And then you got to, again, roll a die or something to determine randomly what creature you're going to take. And then you've got to flip a coin after that. It's a pretty uh, time-consuming process, but I guess it can be done. Pandora's Box. And then we've got, oh, this card. Oh, it's such a pain in the ass. I'm not going to, 
Nobody wants to play this card, right? Power Struggle. I remember the Power Struggle Dungeons. Oh, man. So it's three blue and two enchantment. During each player's upkeep, that player exchanges control at, uh, of random target artifact, creature, or land he or she controls for control of random target permanent of the same type that a random opponent controls. Yeah, so again, I found like an updated text of this one, so I'm just gonna show it on the screen. Really cool art by Mark Tannen, by the way. Um, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player exchanges control of target artifact, creature, or land he or she controls chosen at random, and target permanent of the same type chosen at random controlled by an opponent. So I guess you could kind of make this work, but th the main question is, do you want this to work? I'm not quite sure if I want to play with this one. Anyway, we've got eight cards, so we've got four more cards to go. So let's get dig into the second pack. And Marco, thank you so much for sending these out. It's just, uh, it's so fun to have another look at these. And, and, and I actually want to play with most of them. Prismatic Dragon, so two white and two for a two, three summon dragon flying. During your upkeep, Prismatic Dragon becomes a random color permanently. And then two, Prismatic Dragon becomes a random color permanently. It's so funny how they use the term permanent. It's not permanent because you can keep changing it. <laughs> I guess it means if you don't change it, it stays at that color. I get it, but yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some shenanigans uh, with this card. Um, I, I, it's, it's playable. It's not that interesting, but I'm, I'm sure you can think of ways to use it and it can be fun to play. Art by Amy Weber. And then we've got Rainbow Knights. Two white to cast. Uh, it's a 2-1 Summon Knight. And why is it called a Rainbow Knight? Very woke name, by the way. Art by Douglas Schuler. That's because when Rainbow Knight comes into play, it gains protection from a random color permanently. So again, that randomization uh, that's basically on all the Astral cards, right? And it, it's pretty good. It's like a Punk Knight, but then a little bit cooler, I have to say. So one, you can give it first strike. And when you pay two white, something really interesting happens. You can get plus O, plus O, so nothing happens, or plus one, plus O, or plus two, plus O. So if you're lucky, it gets like a plus two boost, and if you're unlucky, nothing happens. I really like this. I think it's a cool variation on the Bump Knights that we already know. And remember, when you're playing multiplayer, that random color effect actually gets better because there's usually somebody playing with the color that it gets protection from, making it extra good. So yeah, I like it. Rainbow Knights. Let's go to the next one. Whimsy, oh, Whimsy. I remember this one, oh man. Double blue and X. Art by Ansonetics always makes the freaky art, right? This is really Ansonetics art, but I really like it. Play X random effect. So is this playable? Again, um, let me get, I found a card. Look at this. Look at the text on this bad boy. Wow, choose X at random. You may choose the same mode more than once. Wow. Look at all of that. So if you choose to go with this Oracle text, you know, this updated card, you can actually play with Whimsy. It's playable. So yeah, I think it's fun. I think let's go for it. And then we've got the counters from the game. So, oh, look at this. Marco sent me a lot of Tetravite counters from the original game. Thank you, Marco. The beautiful art by Mark Tedden. Really cool, one, two, three, four, five, six counters. And also I have multiple other tokens. I should say tokens, not counters, right? And I've got the token cards in here. So this goes with Bottle of Suleiman and it's a 5-5 five, five Flying Jinn, right? Wow, oh, this one's cool. I love the art on this one, Poison Snake. Yeah, really nice. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so nice. It's it's a card that, uh, you know, the a Serpent Generator, a card that you want to play, but it's just not good enough. But I don't care. I just want to play it. And uh, yeah, I think it could work in kind of like a creatureless deck or something. I don't know. Then we've got, of course, the Rook tokens that go with Rook Egg. Oh, and we also have a Spawn of Azar. That's so cool. This one I've never seen, Spawn of Azar. Swamp Walk. So remember, this one goes with this card. Really, really cool. Wow. Thank you so much, Marco, for sending these cards over. I am going to play these in a game sooner or later. 
it's just really cool to to own this complete set of astro cards now it feels good oh and before i forget look he also sent me an ice age card right remember the letter let's let's get the letter let's get the letter it says i've also included a personalized italian print of a particular ice age card i'm really looking forward to the next ice age tournament greetings from london okay 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 so we're gonna open this up <laughs> i love it zern spellcaster is eating a pizza and here you can see the hat right let me just oh that's so cool that is just hilarious the nice thing is marco is an italian living in london oh man oh he actually changed the text target opponent must buy you one slice of pizza if they cannot put an artif if they cannot put an artifact slice of pizza token into play this token has two tap sacrifice this artifact to gain three life oh so instead of pinging it's life gain look at this <laughs> get pizza tokens oh that's so nice Thank Marco, thank you, man. That is just, that is absolutely hilarious. Um, so this was the video of today about the Astral set. Let me know what you think of the Astral set. Is it something that you would consider playing? Have you ever played it actually in uh, in real life? What card do you like the best and in what kind of setting, a one-on-one -on -one setting or a multiplayer setting? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like it leave a comment and share this on your socials all that really helps the channel grow and move forward and um oh yeah if you're new to the channel welcome here i'm really happy that you found timmy talks please consider subscribing and ring that bell and then there's one last thing that you can do and that is join the timmy talks patreon program and by that you're supporting the channel financially as well and the cool thing is if you join the timmy talks patreon you also get access to the Timmy Talks um, Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. You know what? Let's just go to the end scroll and take a look at the amazing, wonderful, fantastic patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Let's go. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.